hi loves welcome back to my channel and in today's video i am going to be going over my 2020 favorites i cannot believe we are at the end of 2020 as tragic as this year has been it has honestly like flown by this year has been just very different especially if you're like around my age if you're in your like 20s and stuff we've kind of never seen anything like this i mean this whole the whole year in January, the whole the the plane crash with Kobe Bryant and his daughter, and like the seven other people, the whole thing over the summer with Naya Rivera, Chadwick Boseman, you know, we this this election, you know, a lot of the riots that were happening earlier this year from police brutality and just everything going like the things going on in Africa with. I don't know if I can say this on YouTube, but the S-A-R-S, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's just been, this year has just been a wild ride for all of us. But we've all managed to adjust a lot of us. I know I'm in college and I'm also a mother. It's been a very difficult adjustment trying to do my schoolwork and focus on my son's e-learning. It's just been a difficult year for us all. But we are all here. So come on, guys. Bring it in. Group hug this year has been quite a journey but anyway let's talk about some happier things so on a happier note we're going to talk about my 2020 favorites most of it obviously is going to be makeup all of it is not but most of it is so without further ado let's jump into my 2020 favorites i recently posted a video i think it was my last video that i posted that was my drugstore favorites so you guys are not going to see any drugstore makeup in this video for my favorites if you want to see my drugstore favorites go over to that video and watch those after you watch this one and like and subscribe before you leave off of this video but first i want to talk about face products and for face products i would like to start off with skincare so obviously you guys know I still wear a full face of makeup pretty much when I go to work and for those of you who are new here I do work at Sephora so we do wear a full face of makeup usually to work honestly the policy is not as strict right now because of the whole mask mandate thing but it's just easier to sell makeup when you are wearing it because people just tend to trust you more unless they're like a regular shopper who have seen like I in Sephora, we do get a lot of regular shoppers who are like beauty lovers, like a lot of you guys who are subscribed to my channel. Um, and those people have seen me with and without makeup, so obviously they know who I am, they trust me. Some of them are actually you guys, but you guys get what I'm saying. So, but usually I try to wear makeup and, you know, full face of makeup, you never want to leave it on for too long or go to sleep with it, so you have to get it off somehow. I've honestly given up on makeup wipes. I don't completely not use them at all, but I hardly ever do. Usually I'll have like glitter and stuff on my eyes where I need to carefully wipe my eye makeup. That's usually the only time I'll use a makeup wipe. I've been loving the makeup eraser, but to get my makeup off, I used to use a butter, like a balm, but I hate having to dip my hands in there and get my hands super dirty when I could just spray it off. I really love this product because I feel like it does such a good job at not only removing my makeup, that first layer of makeup, but even with my lashes, my lash glue is always so tricky for me to get off. This, when I just spray this all over my face, my lashes just peel right off without a problem. So this is the one size go off spray. It's a makeup dissolving mist. And this is by Patrick Star makeup line. I just really like this. Like, I just feel like it just gets my makeup off really well. And like I said, it got me with the lashes because my lashes have always been difficult to get off. I've used balms and I've also used, like, makeup removing oils. And I feel like nothing gets my eyelashes off the way this does. But, again, it gets all of my makeup off. So, I really love this stuff. And I want to say this is, like, around $24, $25. But I think it's well worth it. I got this some months ago and I use it all the time. I use this every time I wear makeup. And I still have plenty left. And it's also an aerosol can, which I like. So this is definitely a keeper. I'll definitely be repurchasing this when I run out. While we're on skincare, I got this item in my gratis. This is the Wishful Yo Glow Enzyme Scrub. And I like this because technically I don't I don't use this as a cleanser. I use my original cleanser and then I will go in with this. This is like a gentle exfoliant and it takes all the dead skin off of your face. So it's really nice to use if 
I don't shave my face, but a lot of people, like, they do. After you do that, using this, I would only use it, like, maybe once a week. Some people may use it more than that. I wouldn't recommend it, but I just really like how smooth my skin feels after this. You definitely don't want to use it too much. But there's pineapple enzyme, papaya enzyme, AHAs, and BHAs in here. And again, I just like it because I feel like it gets that dead skin off of my face. It, it's like a peel, like almost like how the foot mask will peel your dead skin off your foot. That's what this does, but to your face. But it's a little bit more gentle. So I really like this by Wishful. And for those of you who don't know, Huda, I don't know, Huda Katan, the one who owns Huda Beauty, this is actually her skincare line. For more skincare, I just want to mention Santiva Beauty. This has been like my favorite skincare brand this year. I have honestly worked with them a few times just so you know this is not a sponsored video I'm not getting paid to post this but I just have to mention this because I feel like since I have not used so many different cleansers and toners and stuff I don't have breakouts anymore like I have not had a breakout even around that time of month in quite some time now since I've been consistently using this again there was a time period they sent me some stuff over and I used it and my skin was doing really really well and then I ran out and I never asked for them to send me more because I don't I feel like that's kind of taking advantage I don't know I just wasn't comfortable with it so I didn't ask so I just started using some stuff for my gratis that I needed to get through and I, my skin was doing fine I've never had like bad breakouts but there'd be like a little bump here and there but since I've used this nothing and I'm actually almost out of the cleanser, so Santiva Beauty, if you're watching this video, please send me another one because I love this stuff so much. But it just does a really good job at like keeping your skin clear and smooth and just healthy. My skin is very glowy and it's honestly, like I said, it's just been doing better than it's ever ever been. This, These are luxury skincare items, but these are my two favorite items that I had to show you guys. This is the Clarifying Cleanser and this has sea grapes. <sighs> This has sea grape caviar and pink dandelion and then this is the toning milk and this also has sea grape caviar and pink dandelion. I just love using these together and then after this I will go in with my regular moisturizer and an eye cream. But if you guys have not checked out Santiva Beauty already you guys definitely should especially if you want clear skin and you are not interested in having breakouts. I'm telling you guys these work like definitely go check out their website their link is actually i always link their stuff in my description box and i do also have a discount code in just in case you decide to purchase anything but you guys this is it like this is my cleanser and my toner there's just nothing i have not found anything better than these two like as a combo i've just not found anything better and these are my favorites this year and i think this cleanser is actually only like let me look it up for you guys actually because i'm not sure yeah so if you guys use my discount code you guys can get this for 44 dollars. that's about the same price as any cleanser in sephora anyway so if you shop at sephora you guys can definitely try this out along with this tony milk this is amazing look at my skin i mean i have on makeup but you guys know come on your makeup is only going to look as good as your base. So last year, Urban Decay decided to release their all-nighter face primer. I believe they released it in like October. It was like later on in 2019. But then they had a spinoff earlier this year of the all-nighter ultra glow. They also have an ultra matte version. I have normal to dry skin. This, I love the original all-nighter primer. But this, you have normal to dry skin, is perfect because... I love the way it sits under my makeup. I feel like no matter what foundation I'm wearing, I still get that glowy, dewy look without it actually being too dewy and sticky. Like, I feel like my face looks dewy now, but like if you touch it, it's still staying in place all day. I feel like this is a very good alternative to the Milk Hydro Grip Primer because a lot of people react from that, including myself. There are a lot of people who claim to be allergic to it because of the ingredients in it. This is a very, very good alternative. I feel like it does the same thing. It has that tacky feel. It's just not as tacky. It kind of grips your makeup. And again, it leaves you with that like glowy finish. This is amazing. Like this is probably the best primer I've ever used. Like I've been using this up despite what, what it looks like. You guys, I have like a bunch of primer. So I try to get through all of them, but I use this the most and this is a dewy foundation grip primer it's supposed to prep smooth and hydrate and there's one fluid ounce in here so it's the same size as a foundation so you should probably run out of this and your favorite foundation around the same time but 
This is really good. It's a $39 primer, of course, because it is from Urban Decay, but Urban Decay's all-nighter line, you guys know, is like amazing. It's still one of my favorite setting sprays, and I still love the original face primer, so this is definitely my primer of the year. I love this. For setting spray, I tried a few setting sprays this year. I tried that came out this year, but there were two in particular I really like, but there's just hands down no comparison. I never actually got a chance to try the Urban Decay Ultra Glow Face Setting Spray. I still want to try that. That's still on my wish list. But I did try the new setting sprays I tried that came out this year were by Rare Beauty, Milk Makeup, and by Charlotte Tilbury. And by far, the winner. I'm sorry. This is like, this actually might be better than the Urban Decay All Nighter. This makes my makeup stay in place and it does not alter the finish of my makeup. So like if I have on a matte look for the day, this is not going to make my face dewy. If I have on a dewy look for the day, this is not going to make my face matte. This literally just sets my makeup in place all day and that's just what it is. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. It says party all night, stay all day. And I totally agree with the claims. It says no melting, no fading, no creasing. Times and sets for up to 16 hours instantly locks in your look for makeup. And that's just what it is. And I totally agree with the claims. I have had my found my makeup on for more than 12 hours with this setting spray. And it, my makeup did just fine. I don't think I've worn makeup for 16 hours because who would willingly, like intentionally wear makeup for 16 hours. But this is amazing. It's kind of pricey. She's kind of pricey. She is $35. So I think actually the Urban Decay All Nighter actually might be a little bit more. I think the All Nighter is $36. So I'm actually shocked that this is $35. Not that that's a good price, but I'm just shocked because it's Charlotte Tilbury. But I love this setting spray. This is nice. Okay, so now I'm going to go into like some face makeup and we're going to start with bronzer. So I love cream bronzer. My favorite cream bronzer is the Huda Beauty Tantor. By far, nothing is better. But if we're talking specifically 2020, my favorite cream bronzer was definitely the Kylie Bronzer Stick. I honestly like this a little bit better than the KKW Cream Contour Stick because it's not as flimsy and the formula to me is just as easy to blend out. And I feel like there's more product but I'm not sure. I haven't done the math, but it seems like there's more products in these sticks than with the KKW contour sticks. So this one is definitely my favorite. She originally came out with the cream bronzer sticks when she did the Kindle and Kylie collection. I did purchase that whole collection. Bronzer stick was way too light. I think the bronzer stick was honestly like my skin tone, like my actual skin tone. So it didn't look like anything on my face. So I ended up getting the shade Bronze Tan, and this is way better. This literally contours and chisels my face like I need it to, and I really like this formula. For highlighter, I really ended up liking this Jouer highlighter. This one is in the shade Molten Gold, and I'm going to go ahead and swatch this for you. It's really pretty, and it's like a light champagne-y gold. Just looks like that. It's super pretty on the skin. I don't have it on today. I'm wearing my Fenty Beauty highlighter in the shade Trophy Wife. I'm taking it back, you know, throwback, throwback makeup. But I feel like this highlighter is very compatible with my skin tone. I feel like a lot of highlighters are with for my skin tone specifically are a little bit too ashy they're a little bit too white in them or they're a little bit too yellow gold like trophy wife honestly is not the most flattering on my skin tone but i am a makeup artist so i do know how to make it work but colors like that are not the most flattering for my skin tone something like this is going to be a little bit better for me and i just really like this this is actually the first and only thing i've ever tried from jouet but i really like it because i feel like this is intense but still subtle at the same time and that's what i like in a highlighter i want it to be intense but i want it to be subtle as well you know i want it to pop but i don't want it to be crazy like how we used to wear highlighter for blush i'm gonna give it to the rare beauty blush this one is in the shade love so it's that orangey shade i don't know why it looks like my shirt because my shirt is like a vivid red but this is the orange and I'll just swatch it right there on my hand for you guys to be able to see it. It just looks like that. And I do like Rare Beauty's products a lot. I've tried a few things. But I wasn't in love with the brand. Selena Gomez, I know she's like super, super popular. I've never been like a Selena Gomez stan person. She played in Wiver Wizards of Waverly Place. I didn't. I was not into that show at all when that came out. 
Um, I really like, because I remember it was out around the time of like Hannah Montana. I loved Hannah Montana. I just wasn't like a Selena Gomez fan. Like I do like her. I'm just not a fan, I guess you could say that. I was actually shocked that she was coming out with a makeup line, but I'm all here for new makeup. I'm a makeup lover, so give me all the makeup. When she released her line though, I feel like there was so much hype around it. And I just feel like it was like kind of lackluster of the Fenty Beauty makeup release. I feel like no makeup brand has ever been able to drop the way Rihanna did. Like Rihanna killed it. And I feel like Rihanna really like set the tone. So I feel like it's just going to be hard for anybody else, especially a celebrity, to come out the way she did. Like Fenty's brand is just like I'm sorry. Like I'm and honestly a lot of the stuff from Rare Beauty does give me Fenty vibes. The shade range, the packaging just all of it kind of reminds me of Fenty, but I'm going to give it to her. The, the blushes are amazing. I do like the foundation. I did not like the concealer. I didn't like the lip souffle things either. Um, I tried to even get it in another color. It's just not my, not my cup of tea. But I like the blush. And also, speaking of Rare Beauty, I do like the price range, especially for it to be in Sephora. It is one of our more affordable brands within our store besides the Sephora collection. Like the foundation is not, it's $29. It, next year it may be $30. Usually makeup brands go up a dollar every year, but it is $29 starting out. So, I mean, it's affordable and people seem to really be into it, but this is just my favorite product from this launch. I love the formula. Um, Fenty did release some cream blushes that I actually didn't, I don't dislike them, but I don't love them either because I feel like it leaves like a shine on my cheek and I don't like that because it gets my hair kind of caught in it. I want my cheek to, even if it looks shiny, I don't want it to actually like be shiny and sticky. These just look like regular blushes. Like it's not matte, but it's not like shiny either. And it's cream. I love cream based products. I feel like it gives you a glow from within. I'm sorry, this is not cream, it's liquid. I love cream and liquid products because it gives you a glow from within. This and NYX, those are by far these two. Not this specific shade, but just the formula. I love these this year. And for my base this year, my favorite concealer by far, hands down, there was no better concealer that I tried this year. This is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer. This one is in the shade Flax, F-L-A-X. I don't think this shade is sold in store at Sephora, but you can get it online. But it's crazy because I bought this shade in store. So I think they must have taken the shade out. But this concealer is so creamy, so blendable. It's going to be a little bit better for my normal to dry girls. It's definitely not matte, but I have it on today and I feel like it looks amazing. I love a lot of Hourglass's products. I feel like they could really use some work in like their shade range department, but I do love this concealer. My favorite base product this year is by Bite Beauty. This is the Bite Beauty Changemaker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. This one is in the shade T110. This one actually has a red undertone and I have to do a lot of powder and concealer to kind of get that red undertone away because it looks weird compared to my neck because I have more neutral and warmer undertones than I do red. But this foundation is so good. It's so hydrating and there's a micellar ingredient in here and it's really good for your skin. And it's not a dupe for the La Mer foundation, but La Mer foundation has skincare in it that is beneficial to your skin. So after you wear the La Mer foundation, your skin is going to do really well for a couple of days. And I feel like the Bite Beauty foundation does my skin the same, like it does the same thing for my skin. My skin is always super healthy, super just... It just is reacting very well if I wear this foundation or the La Mer foundation along with my skincare routine with my Santiva Beauty products. I just feel like this foundation is definitely it. It's a $39 foundation and the special thing about this is that it's vegan, cruelty free, and it's clean. So Bite Beauty actually revamped their whole line. It's now all completely clean. I love it. Like I, when people ask me for clean makeup, especially because I love this foundation so much, I love recommending this. And you can build up the coverage. I think it has like a medium coverage. I love this foundation. And I have this on my face today as well. And yeah, it also they also have like a primer and powder that came out with it. I have not tried the primer and I have tried the powder. I do like the powder a lot. And while we're on the powder, this is the Bite Change Maker Foundation. As far as powder 
powders that came out this year. This is a great press setting powder. This one is in the shade tan. This is my favorite powder of the year. I believe this one is like in the $30 range. I can't remember the exact price, but there's no talc in here, no bad ingredients, and it's completely clean. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out Bite Beauty because they have a lot of hidden gems that people just forget about because I feel like they're not like one of those brands like you know Anastasia and like you guys are not like waiting on their drops and stuff because they're not as like flashy and out there but please don't sleep on Bite Beauty the way you guys sleep on Smashbox because you guys sleep on Smashbox okay we're gonna talk take a break from makeup just for a little bit and we're gonna go into hair care so <laughs> my favorite hair care items this year have been this is by Kiss and Saweetie for those of you who don't know who Saweetie is she's a rapper um I actually really like her I don't understand like a lot of the hate she gets on the internet because I'm actually like I don't know I like her like I'm a fan but this is the edge fixer glued maximum hold edge control and the reason I like this is because <laughs> I am just not interested in gluing my hair down or putting like that got to be stuff in it it's just too harsh on my hair and it's just I've tried it one time didn't work out for me it's way too hard to wash out but Something like this, it will hold for the whole day. Obviously, you're going to have to reapply in the morning. Like, once you go to sleep, it's not going to last. But this, honestly, is through sweat and all that. It lasts all day long. And it's just easy to work with. It's easy to wipe out. It doesn't make your hair stuck uh, with all that white stuff in it. I just really like this. And I was purchasing so many of the little ones that I was just like, okay, let me stop and just get a big one for, like, $2 more. Because the little ones are, like, $4. But this huge one was, like, 7 and it just makes more sense to just get the big one because I use it so much. I'm just, I'm sorry, like, I'm not the girl. I'm not gluing my wigs down. I don't feel like I need to do that, especially because, like, I have a lot of hair underneath here. So it's not comfortable to just have wigs on all day. And I don't need to lay my wigs despite some opinions here on my channel I'm not going to be laying my wigs I just don't feel like I need to like if I want to do that that's fine but I don't have to lay wigs if I don't want to do that and you know it's just not comfortable like my my head itches really easily that's just not that's not my journey so I like using this on like my natural hair especially like when I'm styling like my buns and stuff like that so yeah edge control and you guys can find this at your local beauty supply store and speaking of hair care and local beauty supply store i do have natural hair and i do also have a very nice deep wave wig that i got from kendra's boutique i get most of my wigs from kendra's boutiques kendra's boutique but hair mousse if you have like curly hair or you have like a curly wig or something like that and you want to maintain like the curl pattern without it getting frizzy hair mousse there's lots of different hair products and typically I'm not like a splurger on hair products and I found something at the beauty supply store that's super affordable that is so amazing and that is the smooth and shine fine botanical oil. This is like it has shea butter in it and Camila oil and it's a curl defining mousse. It says it's going to help add volume to curls, leave curls light and helps prevent frizz. Totally agree. This was only $5.99 from my local beauty supply store. Oh, it's for curly and coily hair. So if you have type 3 or 4 hair, which I do, I definitely have type 3 hair, this is going to be for you. If you guys want to look at that, this is what it looks like. And it says this type of mousse causes 84% less breakage. It has anti-frizz, a heat protectant, so well. And you're supposed to shake it before you use it, but this stuff works amazing on my hair. Like, I've been using this, and it's amazing. It's really good. All right, so for home stuff, we have this candle. This is the Leo Zodiac candle from Target. This is like a $7.99 candle. I discovered these actually at the end of last year, and they have like sage... Okay, so the notes in here are Devana, Sage, Lavender, Amber, Iris, Sandalwood, and Sandalwood. And I'm telling you, they're $7.99 from Target. They have every Zodiac sign, but this one, the scent of it, this is the Leo candle. This is my favorite scent. For those of you who don't know, I am a Leo. That is my, uh, that's my sun sign. It's a fire sign. And my moon sign is a Capricorn, and my rising sign is a Pisces. But this candle is so good, and... We like having a bunch of these around the house. Obviously, this one is burned to death. Me and Sherrod have a bunch of these around the house. Both of us are actually Leos. And it just is so fun because this is... The, we smelled all 12 candles. This is by far our favorite. 
I love this little candle and again like I said the hints of sage and lavender are very very good for anxiety which my I do get I have anxiety all year round but that fall season I, I don't know if it's because my stepdad got really sick around this time of year or because you know my schedule is back in full swing with school and stuff but my anxiety it could be a combination of both but my anxiety just gets through the roof and just having like things like this and I do buy like actual burning sage to burn around the house it does help so just thought i'd throw that out there only 7.99 from target you can get anything from target for fragrance my favorite fragrance this year this is completely empty now but i have another bottle back in my bedroom this is the ysl leave intense i think the leave perfume either came out around earlier this year or late last year but the intense version came out i think around the summertime it's my favorite perfume this year it just smells so freaking good ysl and tom ford if you guys want to know like the type of scents i like i like all the ysl fragrances like opium Lieb, the mon paris the tom ford i like ombre leather black orchid just to kind of give you guys like the type of fragrances i like i like warm florals and warm and spicy stuff like that stronger scents and i like them to have like little hints of vanilla and stuff but those are my type of scents this is my favorite perfume that came out this year okay guys are you guys ready to get back into makeup because i know what you guys are waiting for and we're almost there so for lips my favorite lipstick this year was from patrick ta and this is the patrick ta lipstick in the shade oh she's single it is a peachy nude the packaging is to die for literally just a peachy nude formula so good and I, like I said I love the packaging so yeah lipsticks are kind of pricey I believe they're like around $24 but the formula is really nice for it to be a bullet lipstick formula it stays for a decent amount of time and then my favorite eye thing so let's get on so let's talk about eyes so let's start off with my eyebrows there has definitely been a change in my brow routine this year and the new product that I love from this year is the new Anastasia brow pen. When I tell you there is not a day I go to Sephora to go to work and I'm not complimented if my brows are done on how I do my brows and people are always asking me like what I do to my brows. So I literally just use this Anastasia brow whiz in the shade Ebony and this eye pencil in the shade Granite. I didn't mean to get the shade Granite. But when I went to Sephora to go actually try this product, that was the only dark shade they had left. All the ebony shade was gone. So the granite's a little dark, but it's nothing like I can't work around. But this is not like the best shade for me. I prefer the shade ebony, but this brow pen is amazing. And I know Glossier was the brand to kind of start the brow pen phase, but Glossier is only sold online. So I'm not, I'm not here for that. I'm not here for brands that are only sold online because... I need to see what it looks like so that's why I tried the Anastasia brow pin first and then my favorite eyeliner this year was the Patrick Star one size eyeliner I actually have it on my eyes today I love this I actually may like this a little bit better than the benefit roller liner but I'm not sure yet I'm still debating between the two but this one is a little bit cheaper the benefit one is $24 and this one is like 22 or 18 or something like that it's a few dollars cheaper so just to throw that out there and also about one size there's like no packaging his packaging reminds me of Christmas but there's like no packaging that's like this bright red I thought that was just very different and then last but not least let's get into my 2020 favorite eyeshadow palettes and i'm gonna start from my least to favorite and I, I won't even say least to favorite but like my least used to my most used but these are definitely my favorites and i'm gonna start off at number there's only four i had to do four because i tried to keep it at one but eyeshadows they're different some people don't prefer certain color stories, certain formulas. There's reasons why I pick more than one eyeshadow palette. I try to keep one in each category, but eyeshadow palettes, I just feel like I can't do that. Number four, I have the Laura Lee Los Angeles Nudie number two eyeshadow palette. This one is a newer palette to my collection, but the color story and the formula alone for me swatching and using it, this is amazing. This is, look, this eyeshadow palette is so good. I love the color story of it and that's just what it is i love tones like these like the pinky tones the pinky neutrals and lately I've, I've learned that i used to love doing my colorful eye makeup looks 
but like lately i've been more into like neutral natural soft glam i don't know why like i just feel not that i feel less creative i just don't prefer it on my face anymore i don't know if it's because i'm getting older i don't know what it is but number two and number three were kind of hard to decide between but i put this at number three just because i feel like i can't wear it as often as number two and number three is my natasha denona glam palette when i tell you the last few years look at this palette this is so gorgeous for the past few years brands have consistently released warm tone palettes warm tone neutral palettes and warm neutral palettes with a pop of blue that's just what i've been seeing in the makeup industry nobody makes cool tone palettes and on youtube i feel like cool tones don't get the love that warm tones do but then there's people like me who don't like warm tones at all on their face i do not like warm tones on my face i love cool tones and i feel like natasha denona was the first person to just really hit that mark making a cool tone palette i just feel like this didn't make it to number two because this is such a glam palette like my intense would be pretty look pretty my looks would be pretty intense with this palette i can't wear this every day this is a 65 dollar eyeshadow palette of course it's natasha denona this is amazing and i just thought it was really different especially because she released it closer to the end of the year closer to the holiday season which that's when most people tend to lean towards cool tones for those glittery silvery looks so i had to put that at number three love the formula of the mattes and the shimmers love the packaging i mean obviously i didn't think anything would be wrong with this palette it is natasha denona but that cool tone and the formula it just got me for number two i was actually surprised by this because I'm not the biggest fan of this brand and this is Makeup by Mario, the Master Mattes palette. And the reason this made it to my number two is because it's honestly been one of my most used palettes because since I've gotten it, I feel like it's because it's just the most easy to use. I actually have it on my face today, just throwing on mattes in the crease. And I feel like you can do this with lots of palettes, but this one is specifically designed for that. You know what I mean? Like I don't have to think about it. I can just grab it and go. This palette is $48. It's ridiculously expensive and the shades are super tiny, super tiny. And I don't even feel like the formula is that good, but I do feel like the palette is very convenient. It's travel friendly. It's small and compact and I just end up reaching for it. It's, I think it's overpriced and all that, but I do really like the palette. And I've honestly, since I've gotten it, this has been one of my most used palettes. And then my number one eyeshadow palette for this year should not be a surprise to you. I've still been using it, though you probably haven't seen it on my channel more recently, but you've seen it before, trust me. This is the Anastasia and I'm Reezy palette. This is me in a palette. The only thing that's missing in here is a pop of green. This is by far my most pal my most used palette this year she's very well loved this came out in january i ordered it off instagram i was so shocked when i saw it like the color story all of that this is this is me this is a palette this is me in a palette this one is a little bit more expensive than the original anastasia price this one retails for 49 dollars because there are two extra shades in here instead of the original 14 i think it has 16. i love this formula i do like the anastasia formula but the color story in here is just it some of you are probably wondering about the mega pat mcgrath palette and i do love the formula however that did not make it on my list because there are only three mattes in the palette out of there being so many shades there's only three mattes and they all lean pink and that's just not convenient for someone like me that's just not what i prefer i need browns and blacks i want mac pinks and all types of other matte colors but i have to have like a brown and a black i just have to so that's why that did not make it on my list but that is it for my 2020 best of beauty mostly so that is it for my 2020 best of beauty um there were some good products this year i just can't believe there were so many releases i didn't realize people were still wearing makeup and shopping for makeup with the whole mask thing well, we still are there's no reason why we can't look beautiful just because we have to cover our faces we can still look beautiful underneath our mask we can look beautiful at home whatever your style is that's on you so by the time you guys see this video there will only be seven days left of the year so i hope you guys are doing okay i'm sending you guys all the love you guys come in give me another hug because i just hope you guys are doing well group hug virtual virtual hugs guys virtual hugs and hopefully 2021 will be much better than 2020 was but you know i don't ever want to take anything for granted we're still here we're still healthy and there it is so i hope you guys are doing well please don't forget to like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it 
and I will see you all very soon in my next one. Bye!